cool. I have extra time. So anytime someone hands me one of these types of mics, I always want to beatbox. But I will not put you through that today. So I'm going to talk about two interrelated concepts having to do with online identity and creativity. The first concept is um, the idea of online identification. And basically, what I mean is when a content creator shares something and posts either under their real name, under a pseudonym, or anonymously. Related to that concept is the idea of the online disinhibition effect, which is basically the propensity for someone to say something online that they would, would not say to somebody face to face. Now, whenever you hear, what, what, what comes to mind when you hear about that? Trolls, you hear about trolls, you hear about bullying. Uh, it's always framed in a negative way. So uh, hacking, anonymous, of course, you hear about catfishing. Um, and certainly, um, I don't want to minimize that there, can, that there are these negative impacts about hiding behind a mask of anonymity. However, I think we need a more balanced approach, especially as it relates to the educational process, because I think, I think there are some good things here in terms of education. New students, students from minority backgrounds, from lower SES backgrounds, and first generation college students are often reticent to talk in class. They're often reticent to participate and to engage. So one of the things that I, I, it's a life mission for me, I guess, is to get students engaged. And I've done research to basically show how we can use new tools, social tools, to engage students in some technologies they already use to get them more engaged in the classroom. And that's just like a lot of data. I can share those if you'd like. Uh, uh, just email me. The, um, so what I found is that if students um, connect online, if they engage online using their, their real names, this is connected to their real name, uh, they are more likely to engage in class and build a classroom community. Uh, they're more engaged in extracurricular activities. And I think that has a lot to do with the disinhibition that's inherent in online communications because it takes a lot longer, if at all, to do that without, um, without the help of, of the online space. And so this slide shows differences in engagement uh, for students who use Twitter with us, for example. This is one of the studies we conducted a couple years ago. Uh, so I'm very curious about this process. This is my curious kitty face. And um, I'd like to know what it is, what's going on, what the root of the process is, and how we might apply that uh, to our benefit, for educational benefit. So what I, um, what I think is going on is obviously students are shy, they're reticent, that's okay, that's developmentally appropriate. But also, all humans have a sensor. And now, because we're all drunk, I would like to, for us to all hack our sensor, and I want you to yell out the first thing that comes to mind when you see the next picture. And don't be shy, because you're drunk, it doesn't matter. Okay, you ready? It's taking forever. Okay, Spider-Man has a baby. That's one of the ones I heard. See, the sensor, or what Freud called the superego, keeps us from saying that kind of shit in real life. It keeps us in social relationships and engaged. The sensor can help us, but the sensor can also hurt us. It can stunt our growth and creativity because we might not be taking some of the risks that we need to take to get creative content out there. So for instance, you might think that people would evaluate your work negatively and then you wouldn't share it or worse yet, you might have that fear, and it's a subconscious fear, and you would not develop your work to the potential that it would have in the first place. So I would like to take a deeper dive into the process and examine how this online disinhibition might be used and how maybe it could be related to levels of online identification. So my hypothesis is that as online identification decreases, so from real identity to anonymity, creativity is going to increase. And you're thinking, wow, that's kind of crazy. Well, I have, I have an idea about how to test that. I'm going to go back to the tubes and gather some data from an image content uh, image creation and sharing and remixing website where they let people log in with different levels uh, of online identification. And I'm going to check, I'm going to grab those images and have raters 
uh, assess their creativity, blind raters assess their creativity, but also look at website metrics like likes, uh, shares, and things like that. So perhaps I can, I can start to tap into what might be going on in terms of identification and disinhibition, and so we can then translate that process and use it more effectively in educational settings.